So in this second instalment of Secrets from Seven Expert Copywriters, we're going to look at the different parts of the brain that copywriters target to elicit unconscious decisions without people even being aware of it. Now it's really important that you understand these unconscious triggers because it will really help you in your own copywriting. Now if you haven't watched the introduction to this series, I suggest you go back and watch part one first and then you can just follow the playlist through. There is also supporting information on the brilliantmarketing.info website. There's a link in the um, description and there will be supporting clips and links to other material that you might find useful. To be able to write great copy, you have to understand how the brain works. And to help with this, I'm going to use a model that was proposed by Paul McLean in 1990. He released a book called The Tree and Brain. And in it, he proposed that the brain had three layers, the neocortex, the limbic, and the reptilian. Now, this model is oversimplistic and it's flawed in its understanding. It's perfect though for us to demonstrate how copywriters target different parts of the brain and that some, respons some responses are subconscious and happen without you knowing. So first of all, the neocortex is responsible for complex thought, written language processing, complex thinking, calculation and rationalization of decisions. It's here a final decision will be made to buy a product Although some copywriters argue the decision has already been made subconsciously and all that is left is for the neocortex to justify it with logic. An example, I know that new Ferrari is expensive, but it will make me look successful at the golf club and attract new clients. Okay, so next, the limbic system processes emotional responses. It gives you a feeling about your decision, which is why stories are effective in copywriting, particularly ones about making people happier or solving a problem. And this is why you should never write about features, rather you should emphasize the benefits, what's in it for the customer that will solve their problem. So for example, the new Z3000 driver will send your ball 20% further than your old club and you will be the envy of your friends. Okay, so finally we move on to the reptilian which is also known as the brain step. And evolutionary is the oldest part of our brain responsible for instinct in survival. It controls the fight or flight response and the main function is to avoid pain or back in the day death by, eating, by being eaten by a saber-toothed tiger. Crucially, it also filters out a lot of information to stop the brain being overwhelmed, which is why your headline has got to get past this gatekeeper so it actually is actually processed by the limbic and the neocortex. We buy things to solve a problem, to avoid a danger, or to feel better so we improve ourselves. And if we can trigger the reptilian brain to take notice, it will pass the message on. Avoiding pain example copywriters target, for example, are, are your sales figures too low and you're in risk of being fired? Or is being overweight costing you a promotion? Your neocortex might not worry about these headlines, but subconsciously your reptilian brain will be screaming Evaluate this. This is all happening without you being aware. And the best way to demonstrate how the brain can be triggered through the reptilian part of the brain is to look at the animal kingdom. There are many examples which you can Google, but my favourite has got to be David Attenborough's recent series, BBC Seven Worlds, One Planet, where he demonstrates how the fight or flight function in primitive, work, primitive brains works on autopilot. In this case, an albatross chick has been blown out of its nest in a storm and it's not recognised by its mother, even though it's right below her. And it's only when it manages to crawl up into the nest that the bond is triggered and the mother starts to look after the baby again. It's an absolutely brilliant clip and you can watch it on the supporting page for this series. The link is in the description. Okay, so the reason why we went through um, the three different areas of the brain was to demonstrate how through writing you can actually trigger unconscious reactions from the reader and there are six weapons or six main weapons that copywriters use to try and trigger responses and they are reciprocity, scarcity, authority, consistency, liking 
and consensus. Now, in the next clip, I'm going to start diving into these in greater detail so you can understand how to use them in your copywriting. And then after that, we'll start to go into some exercises in how to produce the different parts of your copy. Now, we talked about persuasion versus manipulation in the title of this. So what's the difference between persuading somebody and manipulating somebody? So there's a very fine line between persuasion and manipulation. I mean, basically, the, 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 it's the same thing. You are using triggers to make people do unconscious actions. I mean, people persuade people all day, all forms of advertising, you're using persuasion. Supermarkets will try and persuade you to buy more things when you enter them by playing upbeat music. They'll blow the smell of bread at you so you feel hungry. But I think the best way of describing it is that manipulation is trying to make somebody do something that's not in their best interest. Whilst persuasion is showing somebody a product which they'll actually benefit from and persuading them that it's the right product for them.